possibilities for what SpaceX can accomplish are seemingly limitless. Even as the Starbase team works tirelessly to construct a new launch pad and clear the area, SpaceX's Falcon rocket series has achieved an impressive milestone of 200 consecutive successful missions. And if that wasn't enough, Elon Musk has recently announced the development of the Raptor 3 engine, which boasts a mind-blowing level of thrust. Raptor version 3 just achieved 350 bar chamber pressure, or 269 tons of thrust. Congrats to SpaceX propulsion team. Starship Super Heavy Booster has 33 Raptors, so total thrust of 8,877 tons, or 19.5 million pounds, Musk tweeted. My mind is absolutely at this moment. In comparison, the best Russian engine, the RD-180, generates 386 tons of sea level thrust, but has two combustion chambers and two nozzles. This is also definitely more powerful than the RS-25 at sea level. The closest engine comparable is Blue Origin's BE-4, which is expected to produce up to around 240 tons of thrust, using an efficient, albeit slightly less so, combustion cycle, and relies on the same methane and oxygen mixture propellant. Compared to its predecessor, Raptor 3 has gained a significant amount of thrust, Raptor 1 produced 185 tons of thrust, while Raptor 2 produced 230 tons of thrust. Raptor version 2 only achieved about 300 bars of pressure. That's an increase of almost 17%. This record was apparent during a static fire of Raptor 3 that lasted for 45 seconds. And honestly, this is an achievement that surprised even SpaceX itself. Yeah, to be frank, we did not expect the engine to survive a full duration run at that pressure. It is uncharted territory. Raptor chamber wall might have the highest heat flux of anything ever made, Musk said. More on its design, when asked if Raptor 3 looks different or similar to version 2, Musk said, if we can delete and integrate enough secondary structure, which involves small fiddly bits, then we can locally protect the rest and delete engine heat shields. This means that SpaceX is trying to simplify things on the Raptor, which will benefit production and repair. However, the fact is that removing engine heat shields is difficult. If one, by chance, RUDs, you don't want any possibility of cascading events, right? During another conversation with everyday astronaut, Musk was inquired about the use of regenerative cooling and film cooling, which he had previously discussed in his videos about the Raptor 1 and Raptor 2 engines. He wondered if the Raptor 3 engine had eliminated the need for additional throat film cooling, to which Musk replied that they had not yet eliminated it as the chamber converging section was still at risk of melting. However, they were using thermal barrier coatings to mitigate this issue. But in addition, in addition to its power and efficiency, the Raptor engine is also being designed to someday be incredibly reliable. SpaceX is conducting extensive testing so that it could operate reliably even in the harshest environments. The company recently tested at least 30 Raptors during the first ever Starship orbital flight attempt on the 20th of April. During the test flight, the Super Heavy rocket soared around 39 kilometers above Starbase in South Texas. Even though it did not achieve orbit on the first try, engineers gathered enough data to improve the spacecraft for the next attempt set to take place later this year. The Raptor engine represents a major breakthrough in reusable rocket engine technology. It is just one part of SpaceX's ambitious plan to make space travel cost-effective, accessible, and enable humans to someday build a base on the moon and enable humanity to build the first colony on Mars. SpaceX's founder Elon Musk and his team of hundreds of engineers are working to increase the pace of innovation to reach Mars in our lifetime. He has previously said that the company aims to send an uncrewed starship to the red planet's surface after it lands NASA's Artemis astronauts on the moon, which could occur sometime after the year of 2025. And there are hopes that astronauts will build the first sustainable Martian colony before the year of 2050. No doubt about it, SpaceX is designing the Starship's Raptor engine with Mars in mind, as it is the company's mission statement. The engine is a vital part of SpaceX's mission to revolutionize space travel and to make it possible for humans to establish a spacefaring civilization 
optimization. Over the past several years, the engine has undergone rigorous testing and refinement to ensure that it can meet the intense demands of space travel. The Raptor engine stands out from traditional rocket engines in several ways. For one, it uses cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen as a fuel source, which is also known as methalox. This fuel combination can be produced on Mars, making it a crucial component of SpaceX's goal of Inside to Resource Utilization, or ISRU. By creating methalox on Mars, humans can return to Earth and establish a spacefaring civilization. To do so, astronauts could build a propellant factory to capture carbon dioxide from Mars's thin atmosphere and synthesize fuel via electrolysis and the Sabatier process. The Raptor engine's use of methane also makes it a cleaner burning fuel than traditional rocket fuels like RP-1 kerosene. This means that the engine produces fewer pollutants than traditional rocket engines. SpaceX aims to produce each Raptor engine for under $250,000. The company actually achieved manufacturing one Raptor per day back in 2020. In short, the success of the Raptor 3 will definitely bring Starship closer to Mars. Next up, we have the private moon lander's launch with SpaceX that will be delayed until this fall. That lander, built by Texas company Intuitive Machines, had been set to lift off atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket in June, after several previous schedule slips. The latest delay was reported by Space News, which listened to an earnings call held by Intuitive Machines on Thursday, May 11th. The company didn't give many details about the launch slip, but CEO Steve Altemis said significant progress has been made on the mission dubbed IM-1. We have some functional testing pending on the Nova Sea lander, he said, according to Space News. Altimus did not say more about the tests, nor provided further details about the scheduled launch. Intuitive Machines aims to become the first private company to touch down softly on the moon. Other companies before it have tried, but have not been successful yet. Most recently, Japan's iSpace lander failed during its attempt on April 25th. Previous to that, Space IL's Bearsheet lunar lander crashed during an April of 2019 landing attempt. Intuitive Machines IM-1 is expected to touch down at a South Pole crater called Malapert A, with five NASA science experiments on board. The mission had at first been targeted for more equatorial regions, but NASA redirected the landing site southward. NASA has tasked Intuitive Machines and a number of other companies with landing science payloads for the agency's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLPS, program. CLPS is meant to serve as support for the Artemis program, which aims to land astronauts near the lunar south pole on the Artemis 3 mission in 2025 or so, and build one or more bases in the region thereafter. Intuitive Machines has two other missions in the works for NASA. IM-2 is expected to land near the South Pole as well, near Shackleton Crater, while IM-3 will touch down at a swirly feature called Rainer Gamma. IM-2 may be delayed because of the wait for IM-1, Ultimus said during the phone call, the first since Intuitive Machines was listed publicly in February. For now, IM-3 is expected to launch in 2024. Intuitive Machines reported an operating loss of 14 million million dollars in the most recent quarter, compared with $4.5 million in the same quarter of 2022. A portion of the loss, $2.8 million, was due to the costs associated with the merger that took it public. Quarterly revenue was similar to last year, with $18.2 million reported in 2023 and $18.5 million in 2022, Space News reported. Another U.S. company supported by NASA, Pittsburgh-based Astrobotic, is also attempting to be the first to ace a private touchdown on the moon. Astrobotic's Peregrine Lander is awaiting a now-delayed liftoff aboard United Launch Alliance's new Vulcan Centaur rocket. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode, and if you enjoy what my team know you're doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.